What's up guys, this is Camilo for PokerVIP.com and today we're going to be reviewing a session that I played at HighStakes.com some weeks ago, I think it was like, <laughs> I don't know, some weeks ago. So this is 25NL and we're going to be playing four tables. Yeah, and it's going to be table one, two, three and four, like in every other poker video ever. So let's start. The action is going to start on table 4. Here we open King Queen off to 3 big blinds. And we have a player from the big blind defending. And yeah, it's interesting to note that this guy does not have a full stack, so probably a weaker player. And it's really easy on the flop, right? We have top to pay against a probably weaker player, so we're going to be easy betting big. <laughs> <laughs> with the with the top two pair trying to get value and you know get calls from random whatever that he's gonna have so this is like a 75 percent civet or something close to that so that's okay gonna be opening a shack off from UTC. Definitely it's, it's the bottom of the UTC opening range. I don't want to play loose on, on these games with weaker player weaker players from Asia and high rake, so gonna be playing as solid as I can. So yeah, this is the bottom of the opening range. And table one gonna be opening pocket sevens. Um even even from the bottom I'm gonna be opening to three big blinds mainly because the rake is high and I want to play bigger pots on on in general I want to play bigger pots against weaker players. So here we, we get that we get a three bet from James Bond on the small blind and pocket sevens is gonna be always a call I mean depends on his sizing but against this size this sizing this is like 11 big lines something like that so pocket sevens is always going to be a call and probably gonna be folding pocket fours and you know pocket fives is in the middle so yeah pocket sevens is an easy call here on table 3 we have this guy and this guy I have him with this green color that, that I use to to mark you know weaker fun recreational players so he's limping and this can I mean you can fold this with with the rake and all I, I think you can fold this but it's also a hand that I'm gonna be ISOing from the bottom. So let's say that I'm on small blind. I I don't mind I don't mind a fold with this hand, but on the bottom I'm gonna be ISOing, and you can go. I mean this is five big blinds, so I think this is okay as as a sizing. From out of position, definitely gonna be ISOing a bit bigger. And he calls, and this is a really good flop for us, you know, being the the guy in position who is ISOing. We are going to be hitting this flop a lot with, you know, our, our aces. And I'm going to assume that when he limp, limp calls, he's not going to be having a lot of pocket chucks and pocket aces. I mean, you know, weaker players do all kinds of, of random stuff so from time to time he's gonna have pocket aces but in general he's not going to have them and we have you know the stronger the stronger hands that are possible to have on this flop we have them and he for the most part doesn't so this is a really good spot for us and with the double gut shot we want to we want to put pressure on him and 
you know, he's gonna have a lot of hands that call, flop, call and fall on the turn, or we are gonna be hitting or straight or straight with the with the nine or the king, and we can, you know, stack him <laughs> for all all his chips. So this is gonna be uh, a civet, and I'm gonna be. I don't know if you if you saw it from the video, but my timing was really fast in general to to bluff against weaker players. I'm gonna be trying to use a a fast timing because they they are for the most for the most part they are just playing one table, so I think they are paying atten attention to the to the timings. So yeah, we take the pot down. And on table one with the pocket sevens, small blind civets, a, li a little bit more than half pot, and this is gonna be a, a continue. So we call and the ace is not a good turn for us because yeah, now our hand has a lot, a lot less value and he hits he hits that ace a lot so it depends on his sizing but for the most part we're gonna be folding if he if if he civets here on table three you can see that I'm this I think this guy is limping yeah this guy limps from the cutoff so I'm gonna be using the green color to label weaker players and I think that's something really important if you're gonna be playing on these on these sites that have smaller player pools try to especially on highstakes.com where you can't use a HUD try to get as much information as you can on the player pool so green color for the for the fun players and maybe another color for guys that seem to be regulars like for example this guy here Sp spinier or whatever whatever his his cream name is you can see that he's on table one on table three here on table four here so pro probably a, a regular and you know someone who is gonna be not making blunders all the time so just try to be aware of that and yeah on table one he civets this is one third one third pot but i think pocket sevens is still gonna be a fold maybe it's a goal in, in theory i don't know but yeah, we are gonna be continuing with all our our aces, and we have queens still. We have king queen, and queen jack, and queen ten. You know, we have ace. You know, we have a lot of aces that we call the flop with. You know, all the ace jack, ace ten, all all of those combos that are suited and have the backdoor flash draw. We are gonna be calling the flop <laughs> the flop with them. So we have. A lot of hands that we can defend on the on the turn but pocket sevens is not gonna make it here we have queen four from the on the cutoff and in theory this is a race for sure but with the with the rake and you know weaker players here i don't think you need to play these hands from the cutoff i think it's way easier to to just fold them and wait for better spots here table three folding and on table two this guy opens for uh, for two big blinds and this weaker player calls and this is a spot where you want to squeeze a lot because the player here on small blind that, that is calling has a really weak range la, and here the guy opening from the bottom he also has a, a very 
wide range. So you can squeeze a lot here, but you know, this offsuit combo definitely plays better as a goal. Here we have to pay on this mono on this mono board and yeah definitely you want to check here having a leading range will be really bad because they all have flashes and straights and sets and better two pairs on the uh, on the ranges so this hand is really weak if you think about it especially you know on a three way on a three way flop Yeah, and the button C bets for two thirds, yeah, two thirds and small line calls. And yeah, you do not want to raise here because yeah, for the same re the same reasons I said before, for the same reasons, you don't want to lead, you don't want to raise here. It's way better to just call and try to hit a, a full house and stack the weaker player. Now on the turn, you know, easy check to check fold against any reasonable sizing. The turn checks through and now we have a flash, but every everybody has a flash and anyone who has the six of diamond, the die of diamonds or of better has the best hand here. So I don't think you want to start bluffing against two players, one of them being, you know, a weaker player. I think I think on these games you just want to play in a very straightforward way. Here on table three, on table three I'm gonna be opening ace five from the small blind. And this is a really good flop. We have a lot of equity against against everything and he has he's gonna have you know, worst flash draws that we dominate. Here on table two, you you can see that we split the pot. The thing on table three is that he has a he has a forty around forty big blind stack. So I mean, when your hand is so strong, you can see it, or you can check call or check raise. You know, everything is gonna be fine, but. Here against this player with with 40 big blinds, my plan here was to check shop because when I check, he's gonna be stabbing a lot of hands that are gonna hate seeing a, a check raise. So you can also check raise small, but you know him being a weaker player and my hand being so strong and him having flash draws that I, that I dominate and you know I, for all those reasons I just want to I just want to check shop because that way I always realize all my equity yeah he calls and he is like almost dead. He offers to run to run the 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 town and the river three times, and as long as the site is not raking you more for doing that, you want to you want to run it as many times as possible. So. So I think we're gonna win every time. Yeah. Here on table three, just folding seven five. Folding six four. And until one, also folding. 
And on table three, this guy shines, shines the table and he has 10 big blinds. Well, well, he, he doesn't stay around. But what's important here is that on this, on this side, people can join the table with 10 big blinds. I think up to a hundred big blinds. And that's something that you have to take into account because you need to you know have a very basic idea of how to play <laughs> against people that have like this guy here on table one that has 20 big blinds so be aware of that and try to not make mistakes like you want to use smaller size size things and put them all in with with equity as as soon as possible and, and also take notes on them because someone playing with 20 big blinds is probably not beating the games here on table 4 pocket queens is gonna be a trivet I'm gonna be using a relative relatively big sizing so here on table three also opening 10 8 now he calls and you know weaker player we have an overpair we the, the plan here is to just bet big and bet bigger on the turn so I'm using this 395 sizing that looks way smaller than just four. And now the six, I mean, it's, it's not the best turn ever because he's gonna have pocket sixes from time to time and seven, seven, nine. And also he's gonna have pocket chucks, but on, 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 on the two pair combos, like, five six and eight six but whatever we still have an overpaid and he's a weaker player and he's if we shove he's gonna call flash draws probably he's gonna call you know all the shack eggs so yeah we have as you know a small a small overbet on the turn and yeah just trying to get all the money in the pot as fast as possible against the weaker player and he calls with queen shack off i think this hand should not be a defense preflop against the trivet i think that's really bad but whatever weaker players do what weaker weaker players do so we run it twice like i said you want to run the, the board as many times as possible so we win here on table three gonna be opening pocket sixes folding a small blind on table one on table two we have a spot i believe i believe this guy just opens button and we call and now he sieves, and this looks like an easy check fold to me. Here on table four, we have this guy opening, and you definitely do not do not want to trivet loose on these games because they they rake preflop pots when when you trivet so for that reason i think the the best strategy is to just trivet good hands <laughs> do not want and yeah i don't think you want to start trivetting this marginal this marginal hands here on table three just folding same on table one Folding here, the eight deuce.
on these games, there's, there is no chat, so the way you communicate with people is <laughs> is with these these faces, you know, these smile smiles and all of that. So for sure, take note take note on on the people who are using the faces and the expressions and all of that because probably those are the weaker players. Here with Ace Queen, is this is gonna be an, an easy squeeze. And I mean, this sizing is okay, in my opinion, but bigger, <laughs> bigger will be okay also. Like 350. Mainly because weaker players are gonna be calling with Ace Jack and Ace 10, you know, Ace 4, all the, all the hands that you dominate here on table 2 just folding from the button we want to play good hands like this ace skin here opening to 3 big blinds from every position Here we we get a call from the cutoff and the button. This is a really interesting spot because we have we have the nut flash throw against two players and we are out of position. So this is a really strong hand, you know. Also we have the over cards and we block ace jack and queen jack. So I mean we don't really block king shack if they are not calling the the offsuite combos but you know on these games i wouldn't be surprised to see people just calling queen shack off because it's queen shack so yeah this is a really strong hand and we, we when you have such a strong hand you know it's like everything you do is probably gonna be okay i mean not check folding but every other option like c betting or check calling or check racing you know everything's gonna be okay when you have such a strong hand so i think that here what i did was yeah i'm checking and c betting is okay but okay i'm c betting yeah like i said it's, it's okay it's really hard to know what what's better to do in multi-way spots so yeah check calling and check racing are all are also okay and we get two calls and yeah i think with that now we can start thinking about the ranges because when the cutoff calls and the button calls, I think that they never have a set. I don't think they are, especially the button, they are never calling with, with a set, like fives or deuces. So I think in his range is for the, for the most part, like top pairs and flash draws and maybe 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 some ace four of hearts you know that have the the gut shot and the and the backdoor flash draw you know maybe sixes with us with a spade yeah yeah they they could be calling that and six five also in with with the with the space so the, the important part here to know is that when they both call, their, their range shells are, are weaker, for sure. So now we have to make a decision and it's kind of the same as as on the flop because our hand is still real, really strong. So, I mean, everything except check fold into a small bet is going to be okay. So, see betting again it's gonna be okay and check calling or check racing the thing that i don't like here about c betting is that if, if we see that five bucks 
and they race, we have a, a really bad spot where we probably have to fold and we are folding a lot of equity with the flash draw and the overcards. So for that reason, I think that I like here checking a bit more than C betting because when we check, we get to see what they do. You know, we get information by checking because if we check and one of them bets and the other races, that's really strong. But if we check and they both check, they ne they don't have a, a good hand, almost never. So I think checking here give, give, gives us more information than betting. And when we check, we can check call and we don't get push push out of our equity. So, but yeah, like I said, see betting here is also okay. So I'm checking and it's better when is the when the player betting is the cut of player because if the cut of player checks and button bets we have to act and we have still the the cut of player behind but now we're gonna be playing against this bet in position because yeah now when he calls we have the the option to reopen the betting or or not and yeah we are not in the in the middle of the sandwich so now we have to make a decision and i think yeah the same i mean calling or or just racing they they are okay in my opinion i think calling here is a little bit better because when we call and we see a river, it's gonna be really easy to to know if we have the best hand or not, and play and play well in that in that spot. Because I mean, if the river is like a seven, a seven, <laughs> a seven that's not a spade, we never have the be the best hand here. But if this if the river is a is a spade we have the best hand for the most part unless it's uh, like a five of, of spades or a six of spades but yeah when when the river is a spade we have we can assume that our hand is good most of the times because the way they play the flop they don't have sets in general so i think the river is only a bit tricky when it's an ace of, or a king but even even then it's not that complicated so I think calling here and and seeing the river is is the best way to play against player the players that are that are not that that strong because if we hit the flash we're gonna have the best hand and we can value it and they're gonna be making mistakes for sure. So for that reason, yeah, I call. And now we have the, the flash and I think checking here is a big mistake because if we check, I don't, I never expect them to bluff, never. And I expect them to check back hands like as maybe a, a set, like if they have sixes, I don't think they, hey, I mean, they could, but I will expect them to, to not bet that hand. And if they have a worse, fla a worse flash, I think that we can just chop and they're gonna, they're gonna, <laughs> they will call with the worst flash. But yeah, this is not like, a, this is a very, you know, it's face up and is, and, you could get exploited but by playing this way but you know i don't think you have to worry about that playing 25 nl on on the shishi network so i think yeah this is a really easy spot to just yeah just chop the river and let them let them make mistakes by calling
and he calls with this with this flash so we're gonna be winning and yeah this is gonna be the best the first part of the vid of the of the videos playing 25nl on highstakes.com and yeah please leave me any feedback in the comments and yeah this was this was camilo for forkervip.com see you guys later